My name is Bernie Ag, and uh, I started uh, a couple of programs way back in 1971. I was a probation officer in, in the juvenile court in Vancouver. The tutoring program that we started that eventually became known as Step Up, uh, which started in October of 1971. And the one-to-one -one, uh, program where I tried to, uh, to connect uh, adult friends with uh, kids on probation started in February of 1973. I can remember the dates very well because they were momentous times for me. Mm -hmm. Seeing the same kids coming back into court time after time was a little frustrating, so I thought something should be done about it. A lot of the uh, kids that I had met who wouldn't go to school probably had trouble learning. They weren't stupid, they were bright kids, a lot of them. But they obviously had to learn in a different way. We gradually learned more and more about how to keep the kids coming. As a matter of fact, after the first three months, uh, we couldn't keep them away. The kids that we were working with uh, needed to learn a lot of other things besides reading, writing, and arithmetic. They knew, needed to know how to play, how to work, how to get along with people. So I dreamt up uh, very quickly a, a, an idea for another program, and that became what was known as the D.A.R.E. program in those days. Well, not everyone, but for a lot of them, I never saw them in court again once they got into those programs. People often wonder how I met uh, Alistair. I had a boat down in Falls Creek, and Alistair had a boat down there too. Somehow or other, he had heard about uh, one of the teenagers, or one of the kids who was in the programs, one of the, one of the programs. And uh, when he, he said that when he started thinking about it, he thought, well, I'm looking uh, out only for the teenage boys and girls, and uh, why wait until they're teenagers before you start doing the kind of things you're doing? If you can have results, successful result, it's amazing. And the younger you can get them, the better. You know, it's hard to change a kid once he's a teenager, or she's a teenager. They don't want to listen to you. They know it all. <laughs> they know all the answers by that time. And I said, well, it'll cost money. And he said, well, you know, you look after that. And uh, he kept nagging me for at least two or three years uh, to do something about getting a program started. <laughs> as, far, as far as I'm concerned, he's just an angel. I mean, he's the guy that came in at, the time, at a time when we needed him. And, uh, and he's been strong and steady ever since. My hope for the, uh, the future of, the, uh, of the both programs actually is that people will still remember that the most important aspect of, of the one-to-one -one program is that, uh, is that the relationship be one simply of friendship, that there not be any other expectations. Simple friendship. If, if you can provide uh, young people with the basic skills, they can take care of the rest of their problems and the rest of their lives, really, I think. And uh, seeing uh, an idea grow and become a success was very satisfying. And, uh, and something that I can look back on with a great deal of pleasure. I've already, already used the word, uh, um, I've, I've used the word angel. Oh, take it easy. <laughs> it, it, it has many connotations, so, yeah, angel. I say, a good man, how about that? That's close enough. Then if I didn't tell my problems, I'd ever forgive about the bow school. It makes me sad because they're stressing with the pressure of living life like society is giving them the blueprints to do.